Hi everybody, BS Outdoors here. As you can tell, we are not in my garage. We're actually at the wonderful world of Prada's Trade Post here located in Fort Madison, Iowa. Let's go in, see if he's inside. You guys check it out. Hey Aaron, how's it going? Figured we'd stop by, see how it's going here at old Prado's Trading Post. Not bad. Bad, look at all this. Makes fur hats, tans hides, hoops, beaver. Got a little bit of merchandise. Freaking. Here's some of his. Some frozen shad. Got some dip bait worms there. Got a minnow tank. It looks dirty, but I promise you, they're lively and they'll catch all the fish you need. That's my secret minnow tank set up over there. Got some, some sinkers for you. Some, some bank fishing sinkers there. Okay. What's going on, Aaron? Oh, I was just watching an episode of BS Outdoors a little bit ago, and then uh, here you are. <laughs> oh, hell. Well, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about the shop, you know, how you got started and how long you've been doing it, kind of what you do here. All right, so we're right here in southeast Iowa. Uh, we just do a little bit of everything, making fur hats, and uh, where I started out at and started making enough of them. Uh, just became kind of a business and to cover my summertime, uh, started selling some bait and uh, bait and tackle and went from there, just started expanding different things, watching YouTube videos, same as the, uh, all you guys are doing here. So we got, uh, like Brady, uh, Brady said, we got the fur hats, we got tons of fur hats. I can't even hang them all up. Nice uh, otter hat there. All these here are for sale. Uh, they were at the uh, Iowa show uh, last weekend. Uh, you can come in and get your beaver tails made into knife sheets. Uh, you bring me the knife, I'll make the sheet. Make it nice for you. We got uh, everything in here pretty much gets custom done uh, go, when, uh, when you want it. Go back here and check out the setup he's got here. He got pretty fancy, actually. He started out with just old one rinky-dink old sewing machine and moved up in the world. And now he's got this cobbler sewing machine, sewing nice sheaths and fur hats if he needs to be. And here's where all the hides they uh, once they're skinned and they uh, come over to here. I'll start out in one of these barrels here and get down in here. Got some beaver in here, in this barrel here. Got some other furs going in the other barrel over there. So, uh, use a uh, citric can so we're easy on the environment around here. Don't use a lot of the heavy, strong acids and things like that that uh, are damaging. So, pretty, works out really, really well. Uh, Brady, he helped me a little bit on this one, break some bolts loose for sure. But uh, we got the Dakota 5, so that's the newest piece of machinery here in the shop we got now. And if you don't know what this is, we work in a taxidermy shop. Uh, this here, just a knife. See if I can get up on it. Oh, I guess I'll take this down. Just a knife, a knife blade right there. And you run the hide over it which he's got her covered up pretty nice because these damn things are sharp you run it here and it thins the hide down so it fit on the form easier or uh in here thins down the thick spots on the hide makes it tan up a lot nicer be way more flexible um you'll be i'll be able to sew it a lot easier on the equipment uh it won't use as much oil won't have hard spots on it they are a little tricky to run uh be careful if you ever get one you, will, you may nick your finger you may uh cut your arm but uh, uh you just got to wear the proper safety equipment and now are these some of the coyotes you've done yourself yeah so these coyotes here uh bought these from a trapper local trapper they are uh really nice Really nice late season hides last year. So, got them done. 
You get in here, it's pretty nice and white. Everything is what you're looking for. You, you can kind of see how I haven't broke them all the way yet. They kind of just separate right up. But yeah, these are, uh, these. it gets that real nice limberness instead of that thicker uh, kind of leather. Uh, we're not thinning them down. Uh, for the guys at home tan, you use different stuff like that. Uh, if they're not getting soft enough, you might think it's uh, something you're doing wrong. It's just uh, when you got a uh, taxidermy uh, shop and you have this extra equipment laying around, it, it really makes things nice. So, why don't you say a little bit, you know, about your hats here? I mean, so, I've I've seen everything, but a lot of these guys ain't never seen a hat or the process of it made. I see you got a couple, couple in the yeah, works I'll there. See the so. One in the works here in a minute. This here's uh, the standard coon cap. Got a nice long tail on this one. I don't know what this guy's deal was. That is a long tail on that coon. Uh, so this one here, you can get them in quite a few different ways. This is some tree flage in here. Uh, this is actually quilt batting in there. This would be a little more expensive for the for that extra uh, warmth, comfort. You got to um, show this one off. This is about the coolest hat so in, got, in around. So we got this bobcat here. It was also a local trap uh, bobcat, and so this is almost mountain style without the feet. It's uh, got snow flage on the inside. Yeah. And a little bobby tail. Uh, face looking good. I'll tell you what, you go to a rendezvous or anything like that, people are gonna notice you a lot. You're gonna you're gonna get looked at the whole time you're there. I guarantee that. Another coyote hat. This has got the uh, thicker batting in here too. This is more of a youth size. You can see it's not hardly that bigger. Uh, much bigger than my hand here. So this is a this would fall in the kids category. Uh, you go over here. We got a uh, this right here looks really classic. This right here is a nice otter hat. So you can see how the fur kind of sometimes they get a little bit flattened out. Don't be afraid to ruffle them up a little bit. It really stands that fur up. Makes it real pretty. So these products here that I make, they're made to be worn. You can wear them out on the trap line. Keep your head warm anywhere you go. Um, I built some here for a guy in town and he loves them. He's even been in the newspaper because he was wearing it at the park one day. So this here, it's gonna be a coyote hat with the face on it. So the hide starts out uh, by getting the pieces cut. This here is what I call, this is going to be an adult size. It'll be a nine inches across. This right here, you can see there was a little rub on here. Got cut out. I don't, uh, I'm not going to leave that rub on there for you to look at. So, but this is, uh, it, all my hats will be stamped on the inside under the, under the fabric. So if you ever tear one in half and you look at it and it's got my stamp on there, uh, you, you know where it came from. The next thing, when I was talking about the batting, here it is. Same thing, putting quilts and things. Put the fabric on the other side. It's glued and stitched onto the batting, so uh, it's not gonna, not likely to come off. And this will eventually get put up into here, and all that will be sewed around there. You won't be able to see no seams. It'll make for a really good inside. Tail separate. Uh, we'll get that hidden in the seam as that goes together. Once that all goes together, the face, it's got this nice little mooned out shape, which really blends it right back in to the hat. And that'll go on the front like that. This right here is actually uh, going to be for a, for a customer. Uh, so you might, you might see this walking around sometime. <laughs> Now, how much would that that hat, if someone come in and brought in their own coyote, how much would that hat cost them? So something around this is going to cost you uh, around 150, somewhere around there, to be adding on the, uh, to be adding this, to be making the coyote. That's for tanning the coyote. That's for uh, 
putting your liner in, cutting it out. Uh, the faces, uh, they're a little bit extra add-on put in, put onto the hat. So that's something that's a little bit extra feature. The tail, it just comes with it. So it'd be somewhere around 150 bucks or so. Uh, a little higher, depending on if you want that quilt batting, that face added on. If you get mountain man style, it's going to be even more than that. But so, I mean, I haven't had anybody complain about my prices. They're they're actually very reasonable when you consider when you look in uh, magazines and things like that. You're going to notice people are selling them for three, four hundred dollars uh, and everything. But for around here, you you know you got to adjust your prices to where you live at. So. That's why that's why they are what they are when people bring them in. They, they are a little more though if I use my own hides. So, and you also hoop beaver, I see. Yeah. So uh, the old traditional trapper, you'd be going down the river, and you'd be seeing uh, beavers like this strung up on the front of cabins and things like that. The old timers, they bend in willows and things. Uh, stretching them beavers in there, getting them dried up. So what we're doing here is we're just putting them in there for show these days, but uh, that's how they used to do it. Now they got uh, completely new methods of doing it and uh, they work the same way, but sometimes they're a little easier and better. Now what would, what would them start out at? So the beaver hoops, for like a smaller one like this, you're looking at 125 to get your beaver tan and put in the hoop. Uh, you get a very large beaver. Uh, we're talking something over 36 inches. Then it, the price is going to go up a little bit to be able to uh, be able to get that beaver tan and get a bigger hoop, use more materials on it, stuff like that. So yeah, but that's not uh, you know. It's just something really nice though that you can put on your wall with the fur prices being the way they are. It's uh, I don't know if you guys, he's got a tag on it, but this is 2020. And if you can just imagine how this year is going, so are the fur prices. So, uh, so this right here uh, would be a great way to be able to put up some fur in your man cave, your living room, uh, stuff like that. Something that you always want to do. If you always want to do... Uh, you want to make hats, give them out to all your grandkids for the uh, Christmas time. You know, that's something here. Uh, make them with a holder on there sometimes. They got a little turkey feather. But yeah, another youth hat. Get them for the grandkids, get them for the kids. First coyote, make them wear it. You can turn it into a hat, stuff like that. And one more thing before we go, I just want to show you that it takes what two to three coons to make a hat two two to three coons uh if you got very very large coon well uh, you'll you'll be able to make a hat out of two if you have uh average size like just large coon maybe small uh it's going to take three coons sometimes more and like i said you know if, you, if they got rub spots or anything like that and i got to cut them out that just shrinks the hide a little bit more each time you got to cut a hole out uh the the thing that shrinks the hide the most though is if you hunt with dog hunting with dogs is fun it's exciting you're getting that dog out there the dog's getting exercise is what it was made for and everything uh but them teeth marks, them dogs, they their teeth will go right through that hide, and cleaning those up is a little bit, little bit of a booger to get that done. So, well, I want to show you if you don't have your own hides, but you still want to have a hat made, he does an amazing job making sure colors match. He's not going to give you some brown ugly coon and some nice silver light coon. He won't put that on a hat. All his stitches look really nice. I mean, everything. So, I mean, he just does a great job. If you guys need a fur hat made anywhere in the southeast Iowa area, come to Prado's Trading Post, Fort Madison, Iowa. He does an amazing job. Well, I just want to thank you guys for another great episode, and I hope you keep following along. Got anything else to say, Aaron? 
I appreciate you coming by and stopping in today. All right. Thank you, guys.